It's a time to display the richness and diversity of Spanish and Latin American culture, a month for wearing ethnic costumes, waving flags, marching in parades, and attending cocktail parties. But it should be much more than that. This is not Hispanic Fiesta Month. It's Hispanic Heritage Month. We should put an accent on the word heritage. Don't get me wrong. There's nothing wrong with marching in a parade. But first, you have to know why you're marching. Just what are we celebrating? Unfortunately, many Latinos, through no fault of their own, are unaware of their heritage. If their education is based on American history, they probably don't know the accomplishments of their often overlooked ancestors. But Latinos have a long history of contributions to North American society, from those who built the first city to those who died and are still dying, fighting to defend this nation and our freedom, a history that has been left out of the textbooks and the classrooms. To many Latinos, this is mostly a time to party like there's no mañana. And there's nothing wrong with that, as long as we also use this month to dig out the roost of our, the roots of our heritage and remind the world that our ancestors played a major role in changing the course of North American history. The United States is as much Hispanic as it is English because, because it is from La Cuna de America, America's cradle from the West Indies that the United States was born. For Latinos, this should be a time to recharge our ethnic batteries, a time to stock up on historical ammunition, to arm ourselves against those who would attack us with stereotypes or misconceptions. Some corrections have been made recently in some schools offering multicultural education programs, but generally teaching of the role of Hispanics in U.S. history is very limited. That's because American history has always been written as if this country began when the British settled in Jamestown, Virginia in 1607 and the Pilgrims stepped ashore in Plymouth Rock on 1620. And that's a blatant distortion of reality. But forget the history books. This distortion is nowhere more visible than in Jamestown, Virginia, where I spent some time taking pictures this summer. Jamestown has a subtitle. They call it America's Birthplace. But there's only one thing, one thing wrong with that. San Agustin, Florida was established by Spanish explorers in 1565, almost 42 years earlier. In fact, Juan Ponce de Leon was there in 1513. He didn't stay because he found the fountain of youth and he took many barrels of water back to Puerto Rico, but Ponce de Leon was and his men were the first Europeans to land on what is now U.S. territory. It was Pedro Menendez de Aviles and his men who finally settled San Augustine in 1565. It is well documented that the first Thanksgiving in the United States did not take place at Plymouth Rock in 1620, but at San Augustine on September 8, 1565, when the Spaniards celebrated the first mass, Catholic mass, on U.S. soil and shared a Thanksgiving feast with the natives. When you go to Jamestown, they tell you that you are visiting the first permanent British settlement in the territory that later became the United States. But they neglect to tell you that there were other settlements built by the Spaniards decades before. Last May, President Bush and the Queen of England went to Jamestown to celebrate its 400th anniversary. It made a lot of headlines, but there were a few headlines, very few headlines, when San Augustine celebrated its 442nd anniversary just in September. When I visited San Augustine this summer, I had a chance to interview Harry Metz, the official historian at the Fountain of Youth Archaeological Park. So what's with Jamestown claiming that it is America's birthplace? I asked him. He smiled and looked at me and he said, we tell a joke around here. When they were building Jamestown, we were going through urban renewal. Even if we are born in this country, sometimes Latinos are treated like foreigners, recent arrivals. But the truth is that our ancestors arrived here first and that many parts of the United States were explored by Spanish conquistadors almost 100 years before the British arrived. They established settlements in Florida, California, and throughout the Southwest. They discovered the Mississippi River, the Grand Canyon, San Francisco Bay, and many other North American landmarks. Yet everything that happened here before 1607 has always been played down or ignored by North American historians. And the same goes for the contributions we made during the last two centuries. 
three centuries of hidden Hispanic heritage. That's the subject that we should be discussing on Hispanic Heritage Month. This is the time to fill the gaps in the history books and show the rest of society that this country is as much Spanish as it is English. Our roots are firmly planted here. It's a time to celebrate and educate. It's a chance not only to rejoice over the beauty of our music, language, and culture, but to recognize that this country was not explored, settled, and colonized from east to west, as we are often led to believe, but from south to north. It's a time to remind everyone that in the 16th century, it was Spaniards who first explored more than two-thirds of what is now U.S. territory. Unlike Black History Month in February, which is devoted to seminars and exhibits and lectures to recognize the achievements and contributions of African-American historical figures, which, which also have been left out of the history books, this month there are very few opportunities to discuss Hispanics in U.S. history. The difference is substance. On Hispanic Heritage Month from September 15 to October 15, there are many parties and banquets, most of which have very little to do with Hispanic heritage. The month was designated by Congress in 1988 to replace the Hispanic Heritage Week, which had been observed starting on September 15 since 1968. It's an awkward month covering the second half of September and the first half of October, but it was designated that way to include the September Independence Days of several Latin American countries and the October 12th anniversary of the discovery of America. On September 15, Costa Rica, El Salvador, Guatemala, Honduras, and Nicaragua celebrate their independence. On September 16, it's Mexico's time to celebrate, and September 18 is Chile's Independence Day. But here in the United States, sometimes we can be our own worst enemies. Instead of sponsoring educational programs and using them to instill pride among young Latinos, demand respect from the political establishment, and obtain recognition from the media, Latino leaders settle for lip service and worthless proclamations from the politicians. Even the Hispanic parades, where at least there is an opportunity to showcase the typical music, customs, and folklore of Latin America, are usually turned into campaign rallies by politicians who rarely deal with the needs of Latinos. Nowadays, Latino Americans are more than 44 million strong in the United States and the fastest growing segment of the U.S. population. We're a community confronting many barriers to our advancement, poorer, more discriminated against, and less educated and skilled than non-Hispanic whites. But when we listen to historians outline our achievements, we find many reasons to feel proud. Some people fail to recognize Latino contributions to the freedoms we enjoy today, but many Latinos were among those who made the ultimate sacrifice so we could celebrate our 4th of July. We may be underrepresented in politics, colleges, major U.S. corporations, but in the field of combat, Latinos are always overrepresented. Hispanics participated in the very birth of our nation, the U.S. War of Independence. Most people don't know that the war against the British was also fought by Spaniards, Cubans, Puerto Ricans, Dominicans, Venezuelans, and Mexicans, and that they won major battles in places like Mobile, Alabama, and Pensacola, Florida. The money, supplies, ammunition, and soldiers that Spain and the Spanish colonies gave to the 13 British colonies was of utmost importance in bringing about the successful conclusion of the American Revolution. And from from that point on, Hispanics have fought in every U.S. war in a greater proportion than the percentage of the population. More than 10,000 Latinos fought in the Civil War. Thousands of Latinos died in the two world wars and Korea. In Vietnam, Latinos suffered 20% of the casualties, although we were less than 5% of the U.S. population. There are thousands of Hispanic surnames on the wall of the Vietnam Memorial in Washington. Now we are almost 15% of the population, but during the Persian Gulf War, it was estimated that between 36 and 40% of our combat troops were Latinos. In every war, Latinos have fought with courage and unquestioned loyalty, winning numerous medals. Latinos have won 43 Congressional Medals of Honor, more than any other ethnic group. There are many other areas where Latinos have made significant achievements, from the corporate world to sports, and to many other professions. Our entertainers are conquering Broadway and Hollywood. Our scientists have won the Nobel Prize, and our writers have won the Pulitzer Prize, and their books are being turned into movies. We've had Latino astronauts, a Surgeon General. Even Coca-Cola had a Latino president. And what would Major League Baseball be like without Latinos? 
These are the role models that should be identified during Hispanic Heritage Month. Yesterday's conquistadores are today's conquerors of North American society.